Yes, hello to you all once again and another warm welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike TV and of course uh, thanks again to all the brand new subscribers who have just recently signed up uh, to my channel because we have now uh, surpassed that uh, 16,000 subscribers uh, total. So again, uh, thanks uh, for your commitment uh, to my channel. So coming up next, we're going to take a look at a bike that uh, I actually uh, filmed uh, a few years back and this uh, particular machine we're about to take a look at uh, used to belong to an old uh, friend of mine before we uh, sadly lost him in uh, 2019. But we're going to take a look at this particular machine that uh, he put together. So uh, without any further delay, let's just dive straight into this video and take a look at Ian Robertson's at C and J 500 Honda replica. And so this uh, fantastic looking uh, C and J Honda 500 was uh, a bike that uh, was built and raced by my old pal Ian Robertson some years ago. And when Ian raced this bike during the 2011-2012 racing season, it brought him plenty uh, race wins and championship uh, successes. Now the story goes that uh, Ian always had a hankering to own and race one of those big uh, four-stroke HBF Hondas uh, after he saw one uh, on the racetrack at the uh, Kendall Classic Nostalgia Scramble a couple of years before. Although uh, when Ian actually found out uh, what a fully blown HBF horsepower factory four-stroker cost, uh, then he had to have a complete uh, rethink and try and look for a cheaper option. And so, although Ian uh, couldn't buy or even build an HBF original, uh, Ian uh, thought that another option uh, was just to buy an American-made uh, C&J uh, chassis and swing arm kit and then build his very own interpretation of one of those uh, iconic HPF uh, bikes, using, of course, as many Honda parts as he could lay his hands on and that his uh, limited budget uh, would allow. And so Ian's uh, first port of call was of course a phone call uh, to the C&J uh, Racing Frames company in the USA who uh, make and supply the chassis for these big HBF Hondas and uh, soon after Ian had handed over his £2,000 uh, for the chassis and swing arm kit uh, he awaited uh, the delivery of his uh, skeleton frame and then proceeded uh, to search in earnest for all of the remainder of the parts required uh, to complete his uh, HPF uh, replica machine. Now, Ian did tell me that the wait uh, for the delivery of this CNG uh, chassis from the USA, uh, Ian said, was a very long and drawn out affair. And at one time, he never even thought that it would arrive at all. Although, uh, after many months of waiting, the finished chassis and swing arm uh, did arrive, and was it was now all systems go for Ian to try and get the bike ready for the brand new racing season, which was really only a couple of months away. But these uh, steel CNJ uh, chassis are certainly quality items and uh, as I said they come uh, complete with all of their associated uh, swing arm and other uh, bits and pieces and uh, normally you can have them painted in whichever colour that takes uh, your fancy or you could have them uh, delivered uh, without being painted so that you can put your own uh, colour scheme to your brand new project. And so after uh, Ian had the chassis all sorted out and uh, next up was of course the bike's power plant. Although at the time uh, of the build, uh, Ian never really had an engine for his new bike to hand, but uh, as luck would have it, it just so happened he managed to speak to a fellow racer who said that he had uh, boxes of old XR500 parts that he didn't uh, require anymore. And uh, when the seller uh, told Ian that he would take uh, £50 for all of the boxes of parts, then uh, naturally Ian uh, grabbed the entire lot uh, post-haste and loaded them uh, quickly into his car and then left 
the, set, the seller's premises, uh, wheel spinning the back wheels of his car in the process, uh, hoping that the seller hadn't uh, made some kind of mistake with his £50 uh, asking price. Anyhow, uh, all of the associated parts uh, to build this XR500 engine uh, were more or less uh, all intact and in uh, quite good condition and apart from uh, maybe uh, renewing some of the internals uh, like uh, bushings and uh, bearings and gaskets, Ian had uh, certainly secured himself a surefire bargain and a pretty sound uh, Honda four-stroke motor uh, to power his CNJ uh, twin shocker. Now, although Ian never really built the motor himself, he'd uh, sent the boxes of parts to classic dirt bike builder uh, Rod Spry, where uh, Rod uh, then built the entire bottom end of the engine with uh, new bearings, uh, crankshafts and uh, Carrillo conrod and uh, piston, etc. And uh, the gearbox and clutch and uh, transmission side was also all uh, refurbished by Rod and then uh, the motor's barrel underwent some very light tuning and uh, glass flowing as well before the entire uh, completed part of the bottom of the engine was then returned to Ian to rebuild uh, the top end. And uh, soon after, Ian had uh, finished rebuilding the top part of the motor. The engine was then all finished off with a, a nice coat of heat resistant its silver paint on the bottom end while uh, the top end, uh, the barrel, was uh, then decked out in uh, matte uh, black. And uh, Ian did say that he wanted to keep the tuning and upgrading of this XR motor to the uh, minimum because uh, he believed that uh, this would help keep the reliability of the engine intact, but uh, more importantly, it would also help keep the cost down and within the very tight budget that uh, he had allowed. So after all the work was done on this XR engine, Ian now had a very good uh, power plant to fit into his new uh, frame. And although it wasn't uh, one of those uh, big mega horsepower factory engines, it was still uh, going to do a very good job of propelling his new twin shocker around the racetrack. And so as we move on uh, to the bike's uh, front end, Ian uh, decided to uh, bolt on a set of forks and triple clamps uh, taken uh, from a donor uh, YZ Yamaha that he had uh, languishing around his workshop. Now, the Yamaha uh, donor bike was just an old uh, clunker that was a non-runner, so uh, Ian uh, made good use of the bike's uh, front end uh, for this uh, project. Of course, the front uh, fork legs were all completely dismantled and then refurbished and rebuilt with brand new internals, oil seals, bushes and everything else they required to make them like brand new once again. Now the front and the rear brake hubs are again from a YZ Yamaha, which as you know, these are pretty decent stoppers for an older drum brake uh, system and uh, these front ones in particular here are the twin leading uh, shoe variety and these uh, were all uh, sand blasted and powder coated black before they were then uh, re-laced onto a set of brand new alloy SM Pro uh, wheels which were all uh, laced and then trued up by local wheel building genius uh, George Spence from uh, Cooper in Fife, uh, not too far from where uh, Ian lived. And again, uh, the rear hub uh, underwent basically the same uh, treatment as the front and uh, once more uh, this magnesium uh, rear brake hub and uh, brake was uh, good enough to stop a 490YZ Yamaha in full flight. So. Our C&J 500 here shouldn't have too much of a problem if it needs to stop or uh, slow down. And so to uh, sort out the bike's rear suspension, Ian decided on fitting a pair of these uh, vintage uh, Fox air shocks onto the back of his new creation, which he says are uh, quite simple 
in their operation and uh, reasonably reliable and again of course uh, much cheaper for parts and to service than maybe a more expensive pair of uh, Olin's uh, piggybacks. But again these old school air shocks uh, invented of course by the great uh, Bob Fox back in 1974 and uh, these have a decent reputation for ruggedness and reliability and uh, as I said uh, these air shocks have a lot less uh, moving parts and internals than your conventional uh, gas and spring units but uh, nevertheless they still work uh, very well on these kind of uh, twin shock off-road uh, race bikes. Now I'm sure you're already aware that these XR500 four-stroke engines uh, are a single uh, cylinder but uh, they do have a twin port cylinder head and uh, the header pipes that are fitted onto Ian's uh, engine here are a set of stock XR pipes that have been uh, painted in uh, matte black. Although at the time of the bike build, uh, Ian said that he never had an exhaust tailpipe uh, for this bike, so he then uh, called upon his metal shaping and welding skills uh, to fabricate uh, this uh, megaphone type uh, tailpipe, which he then uh, bolted on to the single uh, connecting pipe that came from those uh, twin headers. But as you can see, it all fits together uh, perfectly and it sounds absolutely fantastic when that XR motor bursts into life. Now, when it came to the front and rear mudguards, uh, Ian uh, sourced these parts uh, from John McCrink at Classic Off-Road Supplies in uh, Scotland. And again, uh, these were just a simple, uh, straightforward uh, bolt-on uh, to the CJ uh, chassis. But then again, that's the beauty of these uh, universal plastics in that they can uh, be made to fit just about any make or model of off-road uh, motorcycle. And uh, once more, because uh, this was a budget build, uh, the price of original uh, HPF side panels were certainly beyond Ian's financial uh, budget, not to mention that they're uh, quite hard to source anyhow, so uh, Ian again uh, put his fabrication skills to very good use by uh, making a pair of side panels from an old uh, piece of plastic that he had lying around uh, the workshop. But he said that uh, if and indeed when he could afford uh, proper HPF parts, then he'd uh, remove these and replace them uh, with the correct uh, panels. And so as we move on to the business end of Ian's new bike build, we have a pair of uh, modern style uh, pro taper handlebars and uh, grips. And as you'd expect, all of the bike's uh, clutch, front brake and throttle cables are all uh, brand new uh, items. Now also on the clutch side, we have an all important engine kill switch in case of any issues with that uh, XR500 engine and it needs to be shut down in a hurry. And uh, also we have a decompressor lever there to help you get that uh, high compression four stroke motor into just the right place uh, to get it uh, fired up. And uh, also a decent uh, gasser throttle uh, twist grip uh, to help you tame that powerful XR500 engine and the reputed uh, 36 horsepower or so that these big uh, four banger engines are said to pump out uh, at uh, the rear wheel. And uh, once again, this plastic Honda fuel tank was another one of the parts that were supplied by a Rod Spry, which uh, has been uh, taken from a CR250 Honda uh, motocrosser, but uh, as you can see, it's almost a perfect fit onto the CNJ uh, chassis, although uh, these uh, new alloy mounting brackets here at the front had to be fabricated to support uh, the front end of the tank onto uh, the new frame. But with the brand new tank all nicely fitted with its new Honda graphics, it does look like it was uh, custom made to fit directly onto this CNJ uh, chassis, even although, 
as I said, it did come uh, straight from a CR250 uh, two-stroke uh, Honda machine. Now, although you can't uh, really see it in this uh, picture here, the Honda four-stroke motor uh, was fed its fuel through a big uh, Mikuni carburetor that's uh, tucked uh, quite neatly underneath uh, the bike's uh, fuel tank. And uh, again, the carb's airbox was uh, borrowed uh, from another CR250 Honda uh, two-stroker, which uh, Ian said uh, fitted surprisingly well inside this frame and uh, very little uh, fabrication was needed uh, to make it fit. So when it came to uh, sourcing a seat for Ian's new bike build, uh, once again uh, that trusty CR250 Honda two-stroke uh, parts bin came in uh, very handy and uh, this CR250 seat was uh, simply treated to a brand new cover and then bolted uh, straight onto the chassis and as you can see it almost looks like uh, this particular seat was uh, made for the CNJ frame because it's uh, such a nice neat fit and it certainly uh, complements uh, the remainder uh, of the bike. And uh, once again these wide foot pegs are not uh, part of the original uh, C and J uh, chassis kit because uh, the foot rests that were supplied were uh, much narrower and didn't really offer uh, too much in the way of uh, rider uh, feet support but uh, these wider and stronger items will certainly make it uh, standing up on the foot rests uh, much more uh, bearable. Although uh, some of the smaller items on Ian's uh, C&J are all uh, pretty decent quality like this uh, rear sprocket from uh, Rental and uh, a good uh, DID uh, gold uh, drive chain which uh, should be good enough uh, to transmit the power from that big 500 Honda motor through these uh, Maxxis motocross tyres and then on uh, to the racetrack. Now this alloy uh, billet chain guide from FGR is uh, another good quality item and it'll certainly help towards uh, keeping that drive chain uh, running straight and true when the back end of this bike is bouncing around the track. But to complete the construction of Ian's new bike, all of the bolts and nuts and other fasteners that Ian used were all made from stainless steel so uh, there was very little on this uh, new bike build that uh, didn't get the full uh, renovation treatment uh, from Ian. But during uh, this bike's build Ian had been uh, keeping me well updated uh, with its progress of the build and uh, he was under strict instructions to call me as soon as the bike was completed so that I could grab these pictures of the new bike before it got covered in mud uh, from the racetrack. But uh, after its first ever race outing, uh, after the bike was completed, Ian said that uh, his new machine was uh, actually better than he anticipated, uh, considering that he never had any time to set the bike up before actually uh, racing it. But he does intend uh, to make some slight adjustments to both the front and the rear suspensions as he thought that uh, those were slightly on the harsh side, so he's looking to soften those up before he takes uh, to the track uh, once again. Although, other than the slightly hard forks and uh, shocks, Ian did say that the bike was excellent uh, for its first time out, and that big XR500 Honda motor was everything that he expected, with uh, loads of bottom-end grunt and a superbly uh, smooth delivery from those uh, very willing uh, Honda horses. And uh, these few pictures here are uh, of Ian in action on his CNG Honda not long after he completed the build of his new bike and uh, he even had the time uh, to have a bit of a laugh as well and a, a clown around on the bike at the night before the race and uh, naturally Ian wanted to look the part, so he's donned his uh, kilt here and his uh, CU Jimmy Scottish hat to pose for some pictures uh, for my camera. But this was just Ian in his element. Uh, he was always up for a laugh and willing to do anything 
that involved beer and bikes. And this particular picture of Ian here is uh, quite an iconic image and uh, a good uh, memory of the great man and his uh, C and J Honda. Although I do remember at the time I took these uh, pictures that uh, Ian told me he never actually sat down and calculated the cost and the time that he put into the build of this uh, machine, but he said that, that was never really part of the reason that it was all done because his main intention was just to set out to build an HPF Honda replica to a very strict uh, budget and he wasn't for a single minute fooling himself that this bike is anywhere near the looks or the power of a genuine HPF Honda, although you have to admit, uh, taking into account the time and the money that Ian spent on this build, he still got himself one little cracker of a motorcycle. 